This series is a brief introduction to what little I know about logic. This is part 3. Watch the previous parts if you are not already an expert in propositional logic. Now, suppose you have an abstract machine that takes some inputs and it produces a truth value, but you don't know how exactly it works. You input a number, and if it accepts the number, it rings a bell. If it doesn't accept the number, it doesn't ring a bell. The machine can be expressed as a function, let's call it P. You make some experiments and you notice that P5 is true, but P6 is false. P7 is also false, but P8 is true. Now let's make room on the paper by expressing this in a more concise form. We can say that numbers 5 and 8 are part of the relation P in our model, and numbers 6 and 7 are not part of the relation P in our model. Now suppose we have some variable x1 that is any natural number. What is the truth value of P x1? That is, does the machine accept x1? We don't know, but from these observations you conclude that P x1 is true at least for some values of x1. In logic, you can express this sort of thing using an existential quantifier, which looks like a mirrored letter E. This expression says that there exists some value of x1 for which p x1 is true. You also observed that some inputs produced false value from the mystery machine. So you can say that there exists some value of x1 for which p x1 is false. Now, being a smart and very logical person, you could use the universal quantifier, which looks like an upside-down letter A, and say that it is false that for every imaginable value of x1, px1 is true. Likewise, it is false that for every imaginable value of x1, px1 is false. Great! We have successfully made some scientific observations. Now suppose that you meet the designer of the machine, and he gives you a function f, and he says that this function turns any input into values that the machine always accepts. In other words, for every imaginable value of x1, pfx1 is true. How do we write that? Yep, just like before, just replace for all values with the inverted a. Now we can make some more conclusions again. It is false that there exists some value of x1 for which pfx1 is false. You can also make some more obvious conclusions. There exists some value of x1 for which pfx1 is true. And it is false that for every imaginable value of x1, pfx1 is false. Now you notice that I discreetly moved out from the binary world of false and true into the world of real numbers. That's because we can use these quantifiers with arbitrary mathematical expressions. For example, we can say that for all values of n within real numbers, it is true that n squared is greater or equal than zero. And it is false that for all values of n within real numbers, n squared is less than zero. And there exists some value of x for which cosine of x is the inverse of square root of two. And there exists no value of x within real numbers for which cosine of x is 2. And there exists some value of x for which for all values of y it is true that x times y is 0. And there exists no value of x for which for all values of y it is true that x times y is 1. There is a symbol for that too, a crossed out reverse e. And from 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 5 plus 1 equals x, we can conclude that 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 equals x. Which is to say that if and only if 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 5 plus 1 equals x, then 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 equals x. There are also other logic expressions that cannot be expressed in truth tables. This is going to be just a quick overview. Within allathic model logic, the square symbol is used to denote that something is necessary. A diamond symbol denotes that something is possible. 
If it is necessary that y is true, then it's not possible that y is false, not y is impossible. If it's possible that x is true, then it is not necessary that x is false, not x is contingent. Deontic modal logic has similar qualifiers. The notation OX means that X ought to be true. The notation PX means that it is permissible that X is true. If it ought to be that A implies B, then if A ought to be true, then B ought to be true. If A is permissible, then A ought not be false. If it ought to be that A, then A is possible. In temporal modal logic, Px means that x was true at some point, fx means that x will be true eventually, gx means that x will always be true, hx means that x was always true, nx means that x will be true next. If and only if x will be true, then it is false that x will always be false. If and only if x was true, then it's false that x was always false. In doxastic modal logic, bx means that it is believed that x is true. A reasoner is accurate when for every proposition, if they believe in it, it is true. A reasoner is inaccurate when there exists a false proposition that they believe in. A conceited reasoner believes that they are accurate or that they are not inaccurate. However, I have not studied modal logic yet, so this series will not address these operators for more than this cursory glance. Now in the field of logic, one common question that often arises is, given that we know insert phrase here can we conclude that insert another phrase here for example suppose that we hear the claim it is not true that jill didn't go to movies and jane didn't go to movies now the english grammar is ambiguous here so let's add single quotes to make clear that the not true part is about the entire sentence and not just the first clause now does this sentence mean exactly the same as neither jill nor jane went to movies we can write the two sentences in terms of logic as follows. The proposition is that it is false that, begin phrase, not m1 and not m2, end phrase. And the proposition is that it is false that, begin phrase, m1 or m2, end phrase. One possible way is to create a truth table for both propositions. There are four possible combinations of M1 and M2, and we can populate each column by evaluating the expressions in the right order. When we read the conclusions from the two propositions, that is the two green columns, we see clearly that these two propositions are different. Now, can the aforementioned sentence be interpreted as Jill and Jane went to movies? From the truth table we see that this is not a valid conclusion either. How about Jill or Jane went to movies? Now the two truth tables are identical. This is but one method to compare two propositions, and it works fine for propositional logic. There are multiple ways to arrive to these same conclusions, for example by utilizing De Morgan laws and many other identities listed on the screen. However, once we step out from the realm of propositional logic into the realm of predicate logic, you might be unable to construct truth tables. For example, every cat is a mammal, every tiger is a cat. Is every tiger a mammal? There is no way to make a truth table for this, because there is no truth table for the universal quantifier. We cannot enumerate all possible animals in our table, let alone all possible combinations of animals. There is a method of systematically proving that one statement is equivalent with another. In part 4 we will explore natural deduction. See you soon again. Have a wonderful day.